Welcome back to another video. My name is Henrik and today we're going to be looking at the Skoda Kamiq in the selection variant. This is supposed to be a small SUV in the compact segment and there's some other um, competitors, for instance, the Nissan Juke, which we already had a review on. You can check that out right up there. The Renault Captur, also um, the Volkswagen T-Cross, stuff like that. So if you want to check those out, there's going to be some videos on our channel. But let's actually take a look at the car. This is going to cost you, the Kamiq, without any selection to it, is going to cost you 24,370 euros. The one that we have right here is the selection variant. So in Germany, you have three different variants, the Essence, the selection, and also the Monte Carlo. This one is going to cost you, with all the extras that we have, around 34,000 euros, so quite a lot. Let's actually start off the car, or the review, with the design in the front. We can see we do have the whole grille in chrome in here, which doesn't look bad, but the chrome is actually fairly fake, so there's really nothing real about it, apart from these intakes down here, which from far doesn't look bad, but once you close up, I think it doesn't look that great, because everything is basically covered in here, which doesn't look that great. Also, we do have the Skoda logo up here, which again is that, I kind of like it because we got that arrow and also that like bird up there, which looks pretty cool. And then further down, we do have some more intakes in here, just your typical Skoda design with also a little bit of a lip down here, which looks pretty cool. You could also theoretically get the Scout line variant, which is going to make it a little bit more off-roady. That is it for the front, apart from the lights on the side, which we have. Let's actually go around this side. The lights on here are going to be the full LEDs. One thing that is nice, you always get LED lights on your Kamiq. So whatever variant you have, you always get lights, uh, LED lights. If you get lights, that would be nice. The Skoda Crystal Light is the up upgraded full LED lights, which is nice. They're not matrix lights, but they are going to be full LED lights with also an optional washing um, for your lights in here. You can have that as well. Let's go further on to the side. Where we can see, we do on here have our optional 17-inch wheels, wheels, which are the propus black light metal wheels. These are actually, I think they look pretty cool. They have a very cool and distinct design to it and looks fairly decent with a braking distance of 35.5 meters. That is also a fairly good rate because, well, it's not the best rate, but the car only weighs at, in at around 1.3 tons. And with the engine that we have in here, that's actually um, going to allow you for some good performance. Let's also quickly see what we can get from 100 down to zero. Okay, what do we get? Okay, 38 meters. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a little bit more than we had. We did have a little bit of a slipping distance, so it wasn't the smoothest when going on the brakes. But 38 meters is not going to be world breaking, but 35.5 is what's supposed to be claimed, but yeah. But the engine that we have in here is 110 horsepower, one liter three-cylinder engine. And you can't get that in Germany right now. You can only get the four-cylinder engine with 1.5 liter, which is going to produce 150 horsepower, 250 newton meters. But this engine right here, you can't configure in Germany right now. So the price that everything is a little bit weird about the car because basically this doesn't exist in Germany. In other countries, it does exist. For instance, Austria, you can get it, but in Germany, you can't. So right in here, we have a one liter three-cylinder engine producing 110 horsepower, 200 newton meters. Those newton meters are going to be available at 2,000 RPMs. And also your max speed is 198 kilometers an hour as well as 0 to 100 in around 10.2 seconds the lowest you can get is around 8.1 seconds with that 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine but you can see it is a fairly compact engine because it's only one liter so it's a fairly small engine and you can see all of the three cylinders in here right up there one two and three and yeah well there's really not much to the engine apart from that it's an engine which is turbocharged and that's basically it and one thing that's also not nice about this is it doesn't have actually any springs to it so this is really hard to hold up you can obviously do this as well, but just getting this up, you're going to be able, you're going to be a body lifter once you do this a couple of times. But Skoda, has, Skoda are fairly reliable cars, so this car is going to last for a fairly good time. But one thing that's not so nice about it is you only have a warranty of two years, which is actually not much at all. If you move further, you could optionally also get automatically um, foldable side mirrors. We don't have that right now, and we also don't have a 360 degree camera in here, so we don't have any cameras down here. If you look at here, we do also have keyless go for the passenger and also the driver's side. So you can see I just locked the car. And generally the design is fairly decent. We don't have like plastic touch down here. But one thing, if you come a little bit closer, you can see the welding on here. This is a complete welding line and it is really rough, I gotta say. <laughs> if you put your finger over it, it is fairly rough. And I don't know, they could have probably, oh, okay. Uh, they, they, okay, that's very dirty. They could have probably put something above it just so you can't see that welding line. But from the far, you can't see it, but just when you're up close, it looks a little bit, looks a little bit weird. In here, we also have a fuel tank capacity of 50 liters with a WHP 
um, 5.5 liters, I think it was. So 5.5 liters is the WTP claimed uh, fuel usage, and that's going to give you almost a range of around 860, 850 kilometers, which is or actually more, 900 something, which is a really good rate because you do have that fuel capacity of 50 liters. But we'll talk a little bit more once we're driving how much we actually used. We are currently sitting at well, that's since start 7.5. Let's let's not look at that. Since um, well, long drive, 868 kilometers. We have been using, what, 6.1 liters, which is a really good rate. You can't, um, well, you can't complain about that. 6.1, even we did do a fairly long drive over the, um, over the Autobahn, and we were averaging what was like 5.2 or something like that, even 4.9 at some point. So really, really good consumption rate, and that's gonna allow you to get almost at to the thousand kilometer mark, which is really nice. If we go further onto the side, we can see we, or back, we can see we do have a fairly big lights which go all the way through the side and then towards the back. Again, they're gonna be LED lights. Hopefully the wind is also not too much right now because yeah, it, it's fairly windy today. But on the back, a fairly decent um, sized back window, which is also heated as you can see by the lines and a little bit of a spoiler up top with a Skoda logo on there. And yeah, towing capacity I think is 1.25 tons, which you could optionally get if you get a towing hook on there, which can cost around 400 euros extra, I think. And then if you open this up, we do also have a rear view camera, as you can see right there. And we can also automatically fold it up, which is gonna cost you another 400 euros extra if you wanna use that. And one thing that I can see right in here is loading capacity in here is just really not that much. Trying to put something in here, you can put like two big suitcases in here and that's it. You can obviously flip over the back and also this thing, I don't know how you really use this. Like it's supposed to cover everything up, but I don't know where to put it. Like where do I put this thing? I, I removed it once and now I can't figure out where to put it. You can obviously remove this up here, but the fuel capacity, or not fuel capacity, the volume that you have in here is 400 liters up to 1,395, which is really not that much. You can also flip this up on the bottom so you do have some more storage space in here, but that's gonna have a fairly big loading lip, so you might not want that exactly. And another thing that you have under here is a spare tire, which is nice, as most cars don't have that, and a tire repair kit, um, which is also gonna cost you extra. So the inside is also a little bit interesting because when trying to configure this thing, most of the things that we have in here actually don't work in the configurator. For instance, we have, well, the dynamic package, but with the dynamic package, you couldn't get a heated steering wheel, and we don't, well, we, you could get heated steering wheel, but we don't have heated steering wheel because only, you can only get leather um, steering wheel with heated um, leather steering wheel, but we don't have that, so I'm not totally sure what everything we have in here, but we can see we do have the dynamic package in here because for instance on this um, bar we do have the black touches in here, like black dots, that's gonna come with the dynamic package. Also the seats that we have in here come with the dynamic package because they're more of a sport seat and they're actually fairly comfortable. They might if you're a little bit wider on the on your hip side or your like lower abdomen, they are fairly compact so you might not have the most comfortable thing. So if you're a little bit bigger, um, you might not wanna choose these seats because they're just gonna be a little bit harder on you. Um, well, not this comfortable, um, yeah, not that comfortable. But we do also have Alcantara on the side and then in general just some normal fabric on here. They do feel pretty comfortable, so all over a long time you can definitely sit in here fairly comfortable. We do also have two um, heated seats, so both your passenger and your driver's seat are gonna be heated. Quality-wise, it's actually fairly decent. Up here we have good material, only plastic a little bit down there, but wherever you basically touch, it's not going to be high quality, but it is completely doable for the price range that you got in here, so you can't really complain about that. You also got those like interesting Skoda door handles, which look pretty cool. Sound system here is actually also fairly decent, so you don't need to like con you don't need to worry about having a bad sound system. If you can see right here, we do have the six-speed autom uh, not automatic six-speed manual gearbox, which is a very easy-to-use gearbox. We'll definitely see that once we're driving. Down here, we also have the optional phone booth, which is gonna allow you for wireless charging as well as two USB-Cs. That's gonna cost you 400 euros extra. Automatic climate control with heated, uh, front, heated windshield in the front and also on the back and air conditioning up here and a fairly big infotainment display which works really nice and very easy to use actually and shows you everything that you need. Wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you can have that as well. Steering wheel also, like I said, very easy to use. A typical Skoda steering wheel where you just have a couple of buttons on here, non-touch control, so very nice. And also we have the optional digital cockpit in here, which is also gonna show you everything that you really need, but we'll look at that once we're driving. We do also have one little small 
armrest in here so you can not put much in there, just your belongings. And we also have this thing where you can put your, um, your key or some other stuff. But if you want to remove that, we do also have two cup holders in here, which are really small, so you're just going to be able to fit like those 0.5 liters in there. One thing that we do also have is the panoramic window, which is nice. You can't open it, however, but it is very big and I really, it really makes the small, compact SUV more spacious. And if you want, I did forget that outside, you could got, get an optional 75 kilograms of um, roof loading weight. And with the car being four meters and 24 centimeters long, you can definitely see we have a ton of space in here. That is a little bit compromised that we do not have that much space in the trunk, but in here, if you're sitting in the back, you have plenty of room. This is adjusted to me around an eight, one meter and 80, eight meters and 10 centimeters, that would be insane, or five foot 11. And you can see, knee room is completely fine, leg room also, it's just completely really, really nice, I gotta say. And also because it's not an electric car, you have the, um, bench in here fairly low and because you have that much space you can just easily rest your, um, your thighs on here which is going to make it really comfortable. Quality wise for the seats again same as in the front they are very nice they're not as um, compact as the front seats because they don't have that much arching out on the side so if you're a bigger person you can easily sit in the back and you can also adjust the headrest to whatever liking you want they're not just uh, not non-adjustable like in the front so you can adjust them in the back. Isofix points in here also very easy to use just like an FD well it looks like a Polestar kind of Volvo typical thing but these are easy to use just plug that out and in. Center console or center yeah basic center console two USB-C's a little bit of a climb control which you can't adjust the temperature of and down here we also have this optional thing i don't know well not optional but it's something that i don't actually know what you can do with it but that's there some more storage space in the um, back where you can put your maps whoever uses maps nowadays quality wise on the side just like in the front you can't really say much about it automatic windows in the back and headroom is also a lot because you got that sunroof and therefore you can comfortably sit in in here with a meter 90 six foot two six foot three easily accessible for you which is really really nice and one thing I did forget is also the center console. Two cup holders in here, but you can't flip out the center, so you can't put any skis through there. We do also have an 850 euro extra option here, which is gonna be the um, your drive assistance. So what we have in here is adaptive cruise control. We do not have a heads up display, that would be a pretty cool option, but we do also have adaptive cruise control, like I said, we have a limiter, we have pilot assist or travel assist, which is gonna just allow you to go or drive very easily um, over long distance, which is nice and it's just gonna allow for a very smooth and easy ride over long distance. And in general, you have a very good safety rating for this car as well. Child occupant safety rating is at around 86% from the NCAP norm, and also your, um if you're a grown up at around 96 or a very safe car when it comes to the safety features which is very nice and it's just gonna allow you to have a fairly safe ride. Ride quality in general also good. The uh, suspension in here feels fairly comfortable and also the noise is also not that loud. If you can hear wind noise right now, it's fairly windy outside. We're driving at around 100 kilometers and it's fairly quiet. Also, you can see sixth gear at around 100 kilometers, you're gonna be looking at around 2,100 RPMs, which is okay. Um, but yeah, also the engine noise is very, very quiet, so you can't really, you can't really say much about that. And then this transmission is really, really easy to use. So it's a very friendly transmission. Even if you don't have the perfect transition between your clutch and your um, gas pedal, this thing is not gonna, uh, well, terminate your life. <laughs> I don't know if you wanna put it like that, but it's not gonna be harsh on you and just completely stop right away. This has a fairly good safety, um, or a fail rate, I'd say. So you're not gonna be a driver when you're driving in town that's gonna completely stall the car straight away. So if you are looking to maybe get a manual or an automatic gearbox, the automatic gearbox is gonna cost you around 2,000 euros extra. So that's the one thing you might wanna take into consideration. Automatic gearbox, if you're mainly driving in town, is just gonna be a little bit more comfortable and easy to use. But if you are good with driving a manual, then it's also completely fine. And surrounding view is also really good. You don't have big pillars in here, a little bit of a bigger pillar in the back, but in general, the rear view, rear view um, window is also really, really big, and therefore you just can have a really good surrounding view as well. So easy to see everything around you and also to know how big the car is, really good. Let's drive over here a little bit of a harder suspension or see how hard the suspension is. Yeah, but that is really comfortable. Again, you can't complain about that. It really feels good and just gives you a smooth ride in general. Like I said, if you're a little bit bigger, the seats might be a little bit uncomfortable over time. But general, just driving in town here, a little bit of a bigger bumps, they're really comfortable.
And in turning ranges, this is also fairly decent with 11.1, so easily maneuverable around town as well. So what's my final vertical in the Skoda Kamek? Well, I personally like it a lot more than the Nissan Juke that we already had, due to the fact that you just get a lot more space in the interior, quality-wise looks a lot more modern and also better, and it generally is a very nice car. Theoretically, it's something between a compact car and also an SUV. It's not going to give you the space of an SUV in the SUV, SUV in the trunk. So if you want a little bit more space, you should be looking at something else. But other than that, this is a perfect city kind of small SUV for longer trips as well, which is going to work perfectly fine. If you're two people, four people and going into holidays, it's not going to work for that. But generally a very good car and I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.